Cost optimization is about more than saving money. It's about maximizing the return on what you're spending. Let's walk through how to optimize your costs for Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE. Today, we'll be talking about some general tips for getting started with cost optimization and some best practices. In other words, let's go beyond your GKE bill. Individuals and companies alike are talking about, experimenting with, and deploying apps on Kubernetes. And of course, GKE is made to scale as you add more traffic and more applications. However, scaling your apps might also mean scaling your costs. And as more teams in your organization use Kubernetes, it may become more complex to manage. Let's look at some ways to think about how you can optimize your usage and your costs for GKE. I'll get started by quickly going over some basics and then talk about the business and culture side. Then I'll go over some general technical tips. Simply put, what you're paying for with GKE itself is primarily two things, the managed architecture for actually running the Kubernetes cluster and the resources that your apps are running on, such as CPUs, memory, and storage. There's also a few other things that will affect your costs, like networking and resource location. We'll dive into details to better understand and optimize different areas in these videos. But no matter what the costs are, it's hard to make decisions without knowing where they're coming from. Being able to have visibility into all the different moving pieces is incredibly important. And a great place to start might be using a dashboard to help visualize your resources. The next videos will go over some tips for exactly how to do that. But try to always remember that the more you understand about the full details of your applications, the more opportunities you'll have to optimize. And don't worry, you'll hear me say that plenty of times. On top of that, you shouldn't forget about the people that are actually writing the applications. When you're in a rush to deploy an application, sometimes shortcuts get taken. Or maybe your organization has grown so large that they completely abstract Kubernetes away from the teams, and then they're not even sure how their apps make it to GKE. Either way, keeping developers, operators, and everyone else in the dark about how their applications actually run might cause more harm than good. Instead, consider spending the time to train your technical teams on Kubernetes best practices, like online classes, code labs, and even videos like this one. When teams understand and care about the cost it takes to run their apps, the more those teams will be able to optimize. Beyond that, you can also implement guardrails to protect yourself from updates that might significantly affect your costs. There are ways to automatically enforce policies and set up quotas for resources that we'll also cover in this video series. Building a culture of awareness and accountability is critical to being able to optimize your costs. Keeping all of that in mind, let's switch over to some best practices on the technical side. You can find reference links in the description if you wanna read more about any of these. So if you're already using GKE, you're probably aware of your production clusters but how many development clusters do you have? Smaller teams might work well with one cluster per developer, but you should actually look at multi-tenant clusters to save on overhead. By using namespaces and policies to keep resources capped and isolated, dev teams can have the room to experiment that won't lead to any surprise bills. On top of that, there's a few add-ons that come with GKE clusters that are important for production environments, but might not be needed for your development environments. For each of your smaller clusters, consider disabling or limiting add-ons if you're not using them, such as cloud logging and monitoring, horizontal pod auto-scaling, the Kubernetes dashboard, and kubedns. Most can be disabled with a one-line command. These small add-ons can add up, so the better you understand what your apps need and the environment around them, the more you can optimize. Speaking of what your apps need, do you know what your pod disruption budgets are? You can set the number of pods, or the percentage of pods, that can be taken down when doing voluntary disruptions, like upgrades or auto-scaling. Think about the minimum amount of pods that you need to run without disrupting your application's users. And think about that for each application independently. Pod disruption budgets can help keep your apps running as you configure auto-scaling without over-provisioning. We'll talk more about auto-scaling soon. If you're not sure about how to figure out things like resource utilization or pod disruption budgets, stay tuned. On the next video, we'll talk all about monitoring your GKE environment and getting better observability. Remember to check out the link in the description for the full guide on GKE cost optimization. <laughs>